I don't feel so good. Mm, running a fever. I'm definitely coming down with something. I know. Maybe this will make me feel better. I'll take some belladonna. Belladonna causes fever and sweating when you ingest it. So obviously it should cure fever and sweat. Ah, I'll give it a try. Oh, but belladonna, that's a rather deadly poison. It's better known by the name deadly nightshade. It's got chemicals in it like uh, scopolamine and atropine. These tend to be very toxic. But I'm not worried because there's not actually any belladonna in these little white tablets, but there used to be at one time. That's got to help me. My friends, what I have just described to you is a very, very concise explanation of the modern practice of homeopathy. Let me take you back in time to where this all began. The theory of homeopathy was espoused by this gentleman. This is Dr. Samuel Hahnemann. He lived in what is now Germany back in the 18th century. Now, Dr. Hahnemann lived at a time when not a lot was known about disease. Uh, a lot of the uh, medical uh, treatments back then included bloodletting, leeches, and trying to balance the ill humors of the body, because obviously some miasma has gotten into you which is causing you to feel bad. Once we let it out or balance it with a good humor, you'll feel better. Now, <clears throat> Let's also remember that back in those days, the cure was very often worse than the disease. So a lot of people didn't trust doctors, or natural philosophers as we like to call ourselves then. So Dr. Hahnemann um, was trying to find good medical materials, good curative agents for diseases, something that people would be willing to take and didn't involve, you know, flaying them with, with sharpened blades or something or, or submerging them up to their necks in cow dung to balance the ill humors. Um, I don't know if they did that because I just made that up, but boy, it sounds like something they would do in the 18th century. <clears throat> but anyway, Dr. Hahnemann heard about a mystical plant that grew in South America. This is the plant. It is called chinchona or chinchona. I can never get it right. And this plant was used by the natives of that land to treat the symptoms of malaria. So what does malaria do to you? Well, <clears throat> malaria causes fever. It causes chills. It causes sweating. So Dr. Hahnemann got his hands on some of this stuff and he tried it on himself. He made tea out of it, or he was chewing on it, or something like that. And he came up with fever, chills, and sweating. And he had an epiphany. Oh my goodness! He discovered the law of similars. The law of similars says that if you have a material that causes an ill health effect in a person who is not suffering that effect, it should cure that same effect in a person who is suffering. Makes sense, doesn't it? So if I, uh, for example, have redness and swelling, I should apply some bee venom to that. Uh, that makes sense because bee venom causes redness and swelling, so it should cure the redness and swelling. So. I'll take my belladonna here for my fever and my sweating because belladonna causes fever and sweating. Um, however, belladonna is also known by a common name, deadly nightshade. <clears throat> so uh, I don't know if I really want to be taking too much of this. So luckily they have diluted down this belladonna. So it's only there in very minute quantities. How minute, you ask? I'm glad you asked that question. <clears throat> In the homeopathetic language, you will see this value C. You see it on here. C stands for a 1 in 100 dilution. If I take one part of atropine or scopolamine, whatever the active component of the belladonna is that I'm interested in, 
and I dissolve it in 100 parts of water, that is 1C. Now, if I take a drop of that solution and I add it to 100 drops of water, I've made a second dilution of 1C. 1 in 100 followed by 1 in 100. That is 2C. If you do the math, that comes out to one part belladonna in 10,000 parts of the water. So on my vial here, it says that this belladonna is 30C. So what is 30C? Again, if you do the math, 30C means one part in one 1,000 million million one novem decillion parts of my water. Or in this case, the solvent is sugar. There's little tablets in here. Let's get one of these little tablets out. Let's have a look at it, shall we? Okay. Here I've got a tiny little tablet. How much belladonna is in this tablet? Well, let's say I wanted to have a volume of belladonna components equal to the volume of an average grain of salt. I want to find a salt grain size dose of belladonna. How big will this tablet have to be in order to find one salt grain? Will it be as big as my head? Some people say that's rather big. Will it be as big as my house? Will it be as big as my state? Well, my friends, 30C. In order to find one salt grain sized portion of belladonna constituents at 30C, this tablet will have to be 134 trillion kilometers in diameter. That is 18,000 times the distance from our sun to Pluto. Okay, so maybe that's not fair. Maybe that's not a fair comparison. A grain of salt, that's probably too big. Let's go down as small as we can. I want to find just one molecule of atropine. I want to find a single molecule of scopolamine. Well, if I want to have just one molecule, my tablet no longer is going to have to be 12 light years across. It will, however, still need to be 18 billion times the mass of planet Earth. Now that is a dang big tablet. So what do I have to say about this one? Belladonna at 200 C. The K, by the way, that's a notation that just describes the way it was diluted. Belladonna at 200 C. I would like to tell you how big that tablet would be, but I can't. Microsoft Excel choked when I tried to put the numbers in. And furthermore, the total volume of the universe is far less than this. The theoretical number of molecules in the universe is far smaller than the tablet would have to be. In short, there is no belladonna in this tablet. Absolutely not. Statistically, there couldn't be. But they say, it works! It works! Oh my goodness, it works! How can it work? Well, maybe it's magic. Well, no, that's a little silly. Uh, I don't think it could be magic. Let's see. Maybe it works because of what they call the placebo effect. Well, the placebo effect is real. It generally only works for pain, however. Uh, I really challenge you to try to find a good placebo when you have, oh, let's say, diarrhea. And you notice no one has yet come up with a homeopathetic remedy for uh, birth control. Yes, I don't think there's going to be a placebo effect there. So, <clears throat> indeed, people still say it works. If the placebo effect works for you, that's fine. That's absolutely swell. But remember, for the placebo effect to work, you have to be the one believing it. If you give your children, or heaven forbid, your pets, homeopathic remedies, just because you think they work 
doesn't mean it's going to work on the child or on Fido. That is called abuse, and you can go to jail for it. But let's presume for a moment that there is an effect. How can there be an effect from a tablet which is sugar and nothing else? Well, one possibility is that the solvent actually remembers having had the molecule in it. I'm not making this up. This was a concept that was put forth about 15, 20 years ago by a French scientist who stated that the structure of biochemicals may be imprinted on water such that the water will retain some of the properties of the biomolecule. Really, that's what he said. So let me get this straight. It's not the molecule itself that has the health benefit. The molecule leaves a molecule-shaped hole in the water, and it's that hole in the water that actually has the health benefit. Okay, that's, that's an idea. You know, except for you know, a few little glitches in the concept. Uh, water is a fluid, and by definition, fluids do not hold shape, whether at the macroscopic level or down at the molecular level. There's this thing called Brownian motion. The molecules are constantly jittering around like a bunch of kindergartners hyped up on chocolate and caffeine. You're very, very quickly going to lose any sort of shape you had in that water as it flows to take on the shape of its container. And furthermore, even if that works for water, you may have noticed this isn't water. This is sugar. And no one has yet tried to make me believe that sugar will retain the shape of a molecule that is dispersed in it. So maybe, uh, maybe we should discount that theory too. But I take this and it still works. Well, there's another possibility. I do not for one moment wish to uh, suggest that the makers of these wonderful little remedies here are lying to you. I'm sure they're not. But there are many, many, many criminals out there. And if you go to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration website, you can get long, long lists of uh, remedies that are sold for weight loss, for, you know, sexual stimulation and prowess. All of these things are sold as natural, as herbal, as homeopathic. But the FDA has tested these and found that they actually contain active pharmaceutical ingredients. Some of these are banned because they are toxic. Some of these are available only by prescription because you really need a doctor's oversight when you're taking them. Many of these herbal male enhancement remedies actually contain the compounds uh, Cialis and Viagra by their, their common trade names here. They get this stuff generically from somewhere overseas and they slip it into this little pill and they call it herbal. They call it natural. They call it homeopathic. You take it, and it seems to work. Yeah, that's because it actually has the real stuff in it at uncontrolled levels, at levels where there has been no quality control, and you don't know what else might be in here. My favorites are some of the herbal weight loss remedies. Herbal weight loss remedies, very, very universally, tend to contain, number one, banned amphetamines, which are toxic, and thus they cannot be sold in the United States or any other civilized country because they kill you. And they also tend to contain phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein used to be used in a remedy known as Exlax. Yeah, it makes you go. No wonder you lose weight. You take a few of these natural herbal remedies, you spend about six hours on the pot, lo and behold, I just lost five pounds. Yep. Wasn't the herbs, it was something that you didn't know was in there. This is known as froth, and the people who sell these are known as crooks. Keep those two words in mind. 
Now again, I do not mean to suggest for a moment that the word fraud or crook should be applied to the people who sell these homeopathetic remedies. Maybe they actually believe that these things work. So now, let's recap. What have we learned about homeopathy? Well, first and foremost, it's based on fundamental misconceptions about the nature of disease that came about in the 18th century, a time when we didn't understand bacteria, we didn't understand viruses, we didn't even understand allergies. We had no idea what caused disease. Now we know, and with that knowledge, we know that this whole idea of the law of similars just doesn't make sense. <clears throat> Number two, there is no active ingredient in these tablets. They're just sugar. There is nothing in there, no molecules of the active ingredient. And to the best of physics knowledge, there's no way that you can imprint a molecule on that matrix and have it still do something for you. <clears throat> Worse yet, there might actually be an, an active ingredient in this pill. There might be something undeclared in there that might well be harmful for you. Remember, the FDA does not regulate these things. No one is paying attention and crooks abound. And now here is the absolute number one piece of proof <clears throat> that I have that homeopathy simply is a fallacy. And that is this. You can get all of it for free. And how can you do that? Very simple. All you have to do is pour yourself a nice glass of water from the tap. Because according to the theory of homeopathy, there are homeopathic quantities of everything in this glass of water. Every possible active constituent I can imagine, every plant toxin, every animal byproduct, everything that has ever existed on the face of the earth is present in this glass in homeopathic quantities. Why should I pay for it when all I have to do is pour it out and down my throat? it, you can decide for yourselves if homeopathy is real or if it is just another thing made up to make somebody money at your expense by making you believe it works. So thank you for watching and remember the facts of science are reproducible, they are measurable, they are observable. We do have things out there that go by the name alternative medicine. Alternative medicine is by definition, medicine that has not been scientifically shown to work. Alternative medicine that has been scientifically shown to work is called medicine.